Welcome to the latest episode of Branding the Experience, where we discuss ways how we can create environments where employees actually want to come to work and customers want to keep coming back. I am Ken Bader, your host for Branding the Experience, and I have a treat today. I've got a fellow author, fellow icon of influence, fellow podcaster, a friend of mine that I've known for a long time, Emerald Green Forest. But before I say hi to her, I want to tell you a little bit about her. She is the founder and lead visionary of Creative Age Consulting Group, the Wealthy Life Mentor. Emerald Green Forest is an internationally known speaker, transformation artist, Be the Change Movement to Watch, award winner, and one of America's premier experts. I could attest to that. She is the executive producer and hostess of the Apple Top 100 Ranked Men on Purpose podcast, and I know that she at least at one time had one really good guest, and the Apple Top 75 Ranked, if my audience will know that I was one of those guests, and the Apple Top 75 Ranked Wickedly Smart Women podcast that is hired to consult with high-achieving leaders who are called to be the vanguard of the creative age, and we need that now. Emerald, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Ken. I'm so excited and delighted to be here. And yes, you were an awesome guest on the Men on Purpose podcast. <laughs> thank you for joining me a few a while back, a few episodes back. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot's happened since then. Uh, <laughs> you know, both in the world and uh, between you and I. And uh, fortunately, you know, most of it has been good, and hopefully. Uh, for our audience out there, we're taping this kind of right in the middle of this pandemic thing. It'll probably, you know, we'll probably be live, hopefully, right around the time we're getting past this. But uh, but we'll maybe we'll talk about that later. But Emerald, you know, again, welcome. You know, talk to us a little bit about these great podcasts. I know I had a chance to be on Men on Purpose. Uh, believe it or not, I actually listened to one of your most recent episodes today with Dr. Stewart on depression, uh, because that's something that we need now. So give us a little bit of the genealogy of Men on Purpose and Wickedly Smart Women. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for that, Ken. So um, I spent a number of years of my life, most of my life, um, in relationships with men where either there was addiction, abuse, or I felt alienated. And um, it culminated in an experience in 2016 that was very, very traumatic uh, that I had with my son. And after that happened, pretty much everything that I had going on at the time collapsed, including my business. And um, I, I spent about a year in like a downward spiral. And uh, in 2017, in early 2017, my business in the month of February, now in 2016, my business did... Um, like no, 2015, my business did like almost $300,000 in revenue that year. By the end of 2016, it was cut down to one third of that. By my birthday in 2017, I earned $7 in my wow. business. Happy birthday. $7 for the month of February. <laughs> and I knew at that point that that business was dead and I needed to put it into the fire and let it go. And so I did that at the beginning of March. I put it into the fire, I let it go. And even though I had done all the things, you know, I had reached out to people I hadn't talked to in years and I was going to networking, you know, I was doing all of the practical things that, you know, theoretically should make the business work. And I still only earned $7 that month. And so um, I, I ended up in March after burning my business to the ground, I got selected by uh, one of those old contacts that I had reached out to to be featured on her, um, she was the new host of a show called Fix My Brand on Apple's mm. Success TV. So I was one of the case studies. And during the process of going through her um, Fix My Brand TV show process, it became clear to me that I needed to actually start serving men. My previous brand and business was mostly focused on women with a few very wise men that came through. <laughs> and out of that, out of that, the podcast got born. When the brand, the new brand came out, the podcast came out. And 
um, I, I actually had originally been thinking about doing a TV show, but then as we were building out this brand, it became clear to me at least that the men that I meant to, to serve, that I was meant to serve with this podcast and with this, this new brand that I was building, the men that I was meant to serve were not going to be watching a YouTube channel or something like that. They were, they were listeners. Right. And so that's where the podcast came from. But what ended up happening, Ken, was the podcast became a healing journey for me. Hmm. Every single episode, I was able to actually focus because I realized that I was the single unifying thread in all of the relationships that I had had where men were either abusive or addicted or I felt alienated from them. I was the single unifying thread. So as a result of doing this podcast and really shifting my focus to, to seeking out to spotlight men on purpose, I had such a healing and it was so powerful for me to go through that process and to recognize that men have feelings and that men have their <laughs> own shit that they're carrying. <laughs> yeah. And men have their own shit that they're carrying around and that they're, they're people too. They're not aliens. And so it was just such a powerful, powerful healing journey. And then um, the show did really has been doing really, really well. And oh, yeah. uh, in fact, in my bio, it says top 100, but in March, the show uh, was number 41 in marketing uh, in the U.S. and charts. So it's really done well. And last year, I got the nudge from my source of inspiration mm -hmm. that it was time to serve women again, too. So that's where the Wickedly Smart Women podcast got born out of. So I've been running both podcasts now since September. And um, Wickedly Smart Women came out of the gate and was instantly number 75 in entrepreneurship. So thanks to the new Media Summit effect and to all of my pod pals, yourself included. <laughs> well, thank you for, for including me in that. I don't know if I really did anything except uh, certainly promote uh, your show because one, it's a great show. And two, I uh, really enjoyed being a guest on it. Um, Given men on purpose and wickedly smart women, um, do you find that uh, there's a difference in entrepreneurs and executives if they're men or women? Or is there, it doesn't really matter about gender. There's this one little thing, you know, that you see with both men and women that really make a, dis a difference in success? Well, you know what I've seen, Ken, is it doesn't really split down the line sexually in terms of masculine or feminine. What I've seen, the split that I've seen is there are the kind of hardcore, nose to the grindstone, work your ass off kind of, you know, hard driving entrepreneurs. And then there are the uh, collaborative uh, relationship focused, uh, kind of more weavers of social and uh, financial thriving. And, and it really splits more down those lines than it does down masculine or feminine, because I've actually interviewed both men and women who fall into to that kind of hard nosed driven put the numbers in the boxes you know work hard and you'll it'll work kind of mindset and then i do focus i have a lot more guests actually that are in what i would call the more evolved um model of we are all in this together how can we make it a win-win how can we support and celebrate each other right. and not try and cut each other's throats. So I think that that's where it splits. And it, it both men and women, I've seen that. Yeah, interesting. And so in your, your mentoring and consulting practice, um, who usually gravitates to you in terms of the executives and entrepreneurs that say, you know, I need to work with Emerald. She could really guide me to that next level. Yeah, great question. So um, for me, I actually have a background in real estate. So I was one of those hard driving, like, <laughs> put the numbers in the boxes people, Boy, right? That's surprising. And then, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. And then I had a spiritual awakening and began to experience for myself all of these other kind of latent parts of myself that were not exposed to me when I was still in that box of, you know, nose to the grindstone, just get the results kind of um, mindset. And so the people who gravitate to me and the people who I work best with are people who've done that journey and maybe are at the beginning of that journey. Maybe they're a little bit down the road of that journey where they, they have had a transition of some sort. They have had an opening of some sort that is um, leading them in a new direction. They are uh, recognizing, acknowledging that the way it used to work isn't working for them anymore. And that they are, uh, you know, maybe even injuring themselves, maybe even self abusing in some way or having health problems or relationship problems or whatever. And they know that they've had to make a change. And often they're called possibly to do something completely different with their life, or they're called to bring change to the industry that they're in because they suddenly have this epiphany that says, oh my God, I need to change the education system, or I need to change the healthcare system, or I need to change the legal system, or I need to change the, the um, you know, I don't know, the grocery industry, whatever it is. Like they, they're activated as change agents and they know at some deep core level that they have this purpose and this message that wants to be delivered. And, and so my people are somewhere in that journey. Generally, they're past the initial awakening. They're not, you know, in the, in the crux of that awakening process, but they haven't quite yet gotten to the point where they have, um, you know, what I call expertified themselves. In my new book, Be Heard by Millions and Live Your Destiny, one of the chapters is expertify yourself. Huh. So I help them to expertify and I help them to find their core value and I help them to uh, figure out how they're going to monetize that. And I can also help them to get visibility and possibly even build their own podcast. So yeah, there's lots of ways that I help those people, but primarily my people would be what I would call messengers um, change agents, thought leaders, you know, people who are called, really they're yeah. called to do something in the world. Yeah. I love, I love that verb. Um, you should brand it and copyright it or do whatever, expertify. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard that before. And you gave me the perfect segue because I have it in my notes. I want to talk about this great new book that you have. Um, I haven't gotten my free signed copy yet, but I know that it's out there. And <laughs> it's a five-star book and it's available. It's called Be Heard by Millions and Live Your Destiny. You know, Give us a little bit of a snapshot of, of that book. Awesome. Well, this book actually is, it's funny because this book I wrote seven years ago and it was under a different title seven years ago. And by the time I got done writing this book, I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> it was the book that nearly killed me. Yeah, right? It was I, just like, oh my God, that was a about. horrible, <laughs> horrible experience. It was such a bad experience. But um, over the course of the last seven years, I've had a lot of changes in my own life, a lot of evolution in my own life. You know, the business that I was in when I wrote the book, uh, you know, ended up having only $7 in February and went into the fire. All of those changes happened. And, and one of the things that I recognized just this, this winter, Ken, was there's still a lot of value in the content. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of value in the content. So I, I gave myself, I like to give myself a new book for my birthday every year. A couple years in a row, I gave myself a book of poetry. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I gave myself the gift of this book being redone. And so I went through, I retitled it. I redid the, you know, some of the, the content on the inside to update it. And now it is a number one new release in business consulting, number one new release in home-based business advertising, and number one new release in podcasts and webcasts on Amazon. And the strategy behind getting all of those number ones so swiftly with my new book is launch the book at the beginning of a global pandemic. Of course. <laughs> 
course, you know, I've, <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> we were, we, we were both at the new media summit, uh, about a month ago from the taping of, of this show. And, you know, I remember sitting there and I was so excited for some of the people with some new projects and new podcasts coming out and so forth. And, and I've talked to many of them since either, you know, I've been blessed to have them on one of my shows or we're part of a virtual networking program or something. And I hear from all those folks that I hear something similar, which is, yeah, you know, this, I had such great forethought to do this during the pandemic, <laughs> which sometimes is good. And sometimes is just sarcastic, but I would assume yeah that people have a lot more time on their hands to read your book right now. Yeah, well, and so what the book does is it actually lays out the seven steps that I took to create my multi seven figure business. So I um, had ultimately, by the time I put it into the fire, that business had generated almost $2 million from home as a single mom raising my kid through his teenage horrific years. And, um, and so the, the message in the book is that you can be heard by millions and live your destiny. And there are steps that you can take that are very specific steps, including expertifying yourself, yeah. which happens to be step four uh, to expertify yourself. So yeah, step four, yeah. Step four, chapter five to expertify yourself. And what that means really is to position yourself in a way that people are able to immediately identify you as the one who can help them yeah. to either solve the problem that they have or fulfill the desire that they have. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the things that this book teaches you about is um, you know, how to expertify yourself and how to be heard by millions and live your destiny. Yeah. Yeah, interesting that you uh it's it's a redo in essence. Um mm -hmm. and I'm I'm probably close to redoing mine because I want to cater it to whatever this new normal is going to be after Well, after so the, the so pandemic. the old title. Yeah. Yeah, the old title of this book was actually Prosper in Your PJs. That was the old oh, title wow. of the book. Yeah. So Sounds comfy. um yeah, but, but the creation of the book was such the creation of the book was such a nightmare that I never did anything with it. Like I yeah. finished the book, it was published, but I never promoted it. I never sold it. I never did anything with it because I was like, oh my god, I got to get away from that book for you know as far away as possible. And seven years later, um, you know, and what it what that says to me also, Ken, and what I hope your listeners will take away from it is. Um, that there's still there was still value. I could see that there was still value in the content and and with a fresh cover and a new name and you know spiffing up the content and updating it to include the fact that I now do podcasts which yeah. weren't even on the radar when I wrote this book back then. Um, yeah, it's now hit a place in the market where people are saying, "Oh my God, yes!" and it's now a number one new release in three categories. So, yeah, I, I didn't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. Yeah. How much did you, um, it, now, now, whether my audience wants it or not, I, I'm intrigued being a fellow author. Uh, and I certainly know the pain of writing it yourself. Uh, especially, especially after I finished one whole chapter and it got lost somewhere in the cloud and I had to rewrite it. That's a real, real interesting story. Uh, but, <laughs> but when you went to do the redo, um, did you find that a lot of it needed to to really be altered or was it just more of an enhancement? You know, I'm going to take out this paragraph. I'm going to add this over here. How much of a redo was it? Yeah, it was a small redo. Like mostly it was take out the words prosper in your PJs, put in the words be heard by millions and live your destiny. <laughs> like seriously, that was like the most of the editing. Although there were sections, like I put in a section about podcasting. Um, I also built a quiz to be a partner tool to go with the book. So I had to go into each part of the book and, sure. and indicate, take the quiz, take the quiz, take the quiz, take the quiz to remind people, this is where you're going to use the information from the quiz. And this is where you want to make sure by now that you've taken the quiz. So, 
Um, so yeah, so there were some tweaks like that. Um, you know, I had to go back to the people who had written reviews originally, the endorsers and say, Hey, endorsers, would you please, um, you know, be okay with me changing the name from prosper in your PJs to be heard by millions. And so, so it was mostly like small chunks of places. I did not I did not redo the content, the meat of the content. And what's beautiful about that is it, it reminds me, oh, this content is evergreen. This content is yeah. perennial. This is not, this is not flash in the pan content that's just, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. It's 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 tried and true and evergreen content. So yeah, it was not that big of a deal. But you know, the other thing I want to say, the reason why the first time around was so painful was uh, the way I write usually Ken is I'm just like a, a stream of consciousness writer and this book I happened to write when I was in a program I had invested in this program and and it was done through their structure instead of stream of consciousness yeah. and so I I had already created a, a course called prosper in your pjs that I had built and sold I had like I don't know, I made $35,000 just building that course. I yeah. sold the course before I built it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I sold the course, made $35,000, built the course, and then I had all the recordings from the course. So I took all those recordings, and this is you know, maybe a hint for some people out there yeah. of a way that you can get your book. I took all the recordings from the course, and essentially I unwrote, mm -hmm. I unwrote this book which was why it was so painful because I had to go through every single recording and like peel out the core piece of information as opposed to the way I normally write, which is stream of consciousness. So that's, yeah. that's part of why it was so painful. Yeah. Interesting. Cause um, it just to kind of share, um, and I may have mentioned this to my audience before you, know, the, um, the formula for business success took three different iterations before I actually finally finished the sucker. Um, <laughs> twice I sat down in front of a blank uh, screen and tried to start it and it had different titles and all kinds of different stuff and failed miserably uh, after about two and a half pages both of those first two times. And what actually worked for me was that I, I actually decided, all right, I'm going to create the outline as buckets of everything that I want to talk about in terms of brand culture and strategy and how it aligns. And I'm going to go through every article that I ever wrote, every, every presentation that I ever did um, and snippets and so forth. And this too was before any, any podcast, before I even knew what the hell a podcast was. It uh, just simply put all of that stuff in the buckets in a Word document. And I found that by doing that, I wound up with about 55 pages just having a disparate disconnection of all of that stuff. But what I did find is that when I went to go write it, it wasn't quite as daunting of a task because there was stuff there already. It wasn't a blank screen. It became the first four chapters of the six became more of a uh, an editing project of how is this going to work together than a, all right, I need to come up with something from scratch. Yeah, so give me the blank canvas all day, any day. Hmm. The editing was laborious for me. Interesting. Just laborious. It was really laborious. But when I did it this time around, because it really wasn't that much editing to do. <laughs> it's just pretty much cut, cut out, get prosper in your PJs, put it here by millions and live your destiny. Uh, it wasn't so bad for me. And I'm, I'm really, really happy with the book and I'm really happy that it's doing so well. It's yeah. gotten all five star reviews and yeah. And number one in three different categories, which was really a surprise for me as well. And so my prayer is that it's actually going to help those people who may be suddenly working from home. Yeah. Right. And who are uh, just having their own little come to Jesus with themselves around whether or not they actually want to go back to work yeah. or whether it's time for them to leave their industry or leave their corner office, quit the corner office and, um, you know, 
do something different with yeah. their life that's more in alignment with what they're called to do and less in alignment with the conditioning that they grew up with to set, that said, you know, go to work, go to school, get good grades, go to work, buy the house, have the kids, get the dog, you know, the, yeah. that, that path. Call Not that there's there, anything wrong with that path, hands. but for some, yeah, but for some people, um, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that path. I mean, I took that path, but then it came to a point where that path ended for me. And yeah. I know there's a lot of people, especially when there's a crisis, crisis and opportunity or danger and opportunity are the two words that make up the Chinese character crisis, according to some yeah. people. And so when we're in a crisis circumstance, uh, and initially we're just like dealing with the crisis but it's also sometimes a real wake-up call for people. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I mean, nine eleven was nine eleven was the wake-up call for me that put me took me out of real estate and into personal and professional development. So. Yeah, yeah. Funny, funny that you say that because I got canned from my six-figure VP job at the age of thirty-one, literally like ten days before nine eleven and decided to start beta training and consulting and s filled out all the stuff that I needed for my attorney and was taking it to the post office uh, exactly between the two planes hitting the World Trade Center. Uh, so I, I, every time people ask, you know, when did you start your business? I say 9-11-01, sounded like a great day to do, to start a business that day. <laughs> Dude, I was on my way to the courthouse to file papers for my divorce that day for my first husband. <laughs> well, <laughs> and they ended up closing the courthouse, so I couldn't file till the next day, but I was there the next day. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad, mm -hmm. knowing, knowing some of your past, I'm glad you didn't change your mind on that one. Um, <laughs> but you know, you've got the book, you've got your consulting practice, and you have two amazing podcasts. Um, can you give us, and maybe you already did with that Expertify, because that was well, well branded and an awesome way of putting it. Uh, can you give us in our audience, you know, one number one tip, and maybe it's kind of getting out of this crisis. What's one number one tip that you would offer to people to say, if you do this, you know what, you, you can, you could level up your career, level up your business or, or level up what you're doing. Yeah, well, so the first step in my Be Heard by Million solution, which the Be Heard by Million solution actually spells out the words Be Heard, B-E-H-D-A-R-D. -E so the first step in my Be Heard by Million solution is believe in yourself. Yeah. Believe in yourself. And so one of the things that I wrote about in, um, in the beginning chapters of this book, Because You Must Believe, chapter two, is um, we have to do butt crackers. I call them butt crackers. So I know I'm here to share a big message, but, right? So you want to take a moment to tune into yourself, know whether or not you're actually called. If you're called to share a big message, then you're definitely one of my people. And then go in and start doing your butt cracking, right? Which is, Asking yourself the question, I know I'm here to share my big message, but I know I'm here to share with people around the world, but, you know, be ruthlessly honest with yourself, right? Because you would not have these gifts if you were not meant to serve the people who are actually praying for what it is that you have come up with. Um, and whether whatever you've come up with, whether it's the solution to someone's problem or it's the fulfillment of their desire, right. you wouldn't have that calling. Uh, the way I like to define the calling, Ken, is it's the calling of your own heart to make the contribution it came to deliver, but it's also the prayers of the people who are specifically looking exactly for you to serve them. And every one of those prayers is literally like strumming your heartstrings. Yeah. Every time somebody sends up the prayer, like, I really need help with, you know, I don't know, changing my weight, or I really want to have the best wedding ever, or whatever it is, right? So changing your weight would be a problem that you solve. Mm -hmm. 
best wedding ever is fulfilling a desire, right? So they're two different things, but there's still like the, the um, there's a partnership there that happens between right. their prayer and your heart. And so you, you have to believe that you wouldn't have the calling if there weren't people out there who are praying for uh, exactly how you do it and exactly how you will deliver it. And, and so for those people, especially who look around and say, oh, wow, I could really do this thing. And then they start looking around and say, oh yeah, but that person's doing it or that person's yeah. doing it or that person's doing it or that person's doing it. Oh, well, there's too many people doing it. Um, <laughs> that's not for me, right? Yeah. The truth is if you have the calling, there are people out there that you are here to serve. Always, always. Yeah. Just like there's Lowe's and there's Home Depot. Yep. And there's <laughs> Starbucks and there's Dunkin' Donuts. You know, I mean, like, just because somebody else is doing it, you can do it in, in only the way that you can do it. And it is yeah. in the way that you do it. That's what people are buying. Great point. And by the way, Dunkin' Donuts kicks the shit out of Starbucks. <laughs> I would, I would agree with you. I would agree with you as a New England girl, as a New England girl where Dunkin' Donuts was, was originated. Yep. I would have to agree with you. It yeah. is a, it is a Chicago kid who went by a Dunkin' Donuts on his way to practically every class during college and needed that coffee and those two donuts in the morning. <laughs> I I know exactly the value of Dunkin' Donuts, and we have them in California now, which is awesome. Uh, last question, go. last question I have for you, uh, for our audience out there that could really use your expertise, your brilliance. How best can they find you? Well, I actually created the quiz to go with this book. Awesome. Um, and it is a speaker archetype quiz because if you're called to be a messenger, mm -hmm. that means that you need to deliver your message. Sometimes it's in writing, sometimes it's speaking, uh, usually it's both, right? right. So, um, you, the speaker archetype quiz, when you take that quiz, there are five different speaker archetypes and uh, the quiz will give you the results that will show you exactly what speaker archetype you are. And it takes less than five minutes. It's like seven or eight questions. It's not that long of a quiz. And for those people who take the quiz and then decide that they would like to have a consultation call with me, they can apply for that consultation call. And just for applying for the call, we send a download of the book for a, a electronic version of the book for free. Awesome. So uh, if you are interested in getting the book and getting consulting, then take the quiz at quiz.beheardbymillions.com. That's quiz.beheardbymillions.com. Take the quiz, get your results, and then click the little apply button, fill out the application for a consultation with me. I'm not going to be able to take everybody, but everybody who does apply will get a free copy of the book. That's that's awesome, and it's worth doing that quiz for nothing else than to get the free copy of this awesome book. Um, definitely, we will have the link uh, for that quiz uh, in the show notes for uh, Branding the Experience. Uh, definitely go out, take that quiz, grab a copy of that book. You know, I personally like hard copies, so I'm going to have to go to Amazon to get mine. Uh, but Emerald, great tips great insight and thank you so much for being on the show well thank you so much for having me ken it's been my pleasure well the pleasure is all mine thank you again emerald and thank all of you for watching branding the experience and as always here's hoping that you're branding the experience at a very high level for all those you serve take care thank you for watching branding the experience i hope you enjoyed the show if you're looking for a speaker on branding the experience, on workplace culture, or on business strategy, I have a number of different options for you. And my approach is always to entertain first, engage second, and educate third. It's a formula that leaves my audience not only laughing and enjoying, but also learning. So if you want a great speaker on branding, culture building, or strategy, I'd like to hear from you. 
simply send me an email at kbater, B-A-T-O-R, at B-T-C inc.net or to learn more about the presentations that I've done that have been successful in the past go to www.btcinc.net